I was blind, but now I see. Uh, <laughs> uh, do I have a witness in the house today? Anybody here used to be blind? Going through this life and walking in darkness, think you you on the right path, you on the right trail, and and, and and finding out that it's all been a lie. Woo. But I am so glad that Yahweh He examines him the heart of man, that he can see the contents of, of the heart, that he knows that our sincerity, we, well, we meant to do the right thing, and but well, we just still don't know. But he said it is worth that his people perish because of the lack of. Isn't that right? They lack of. But anyway, we're going to stand to our feet, feet, stand and invoke his presence. We always welcome him uh, before we get started, his presence, because there's nothing like his glory being in this place. And it's good to see you, my brother. Amen. Welcome, welcome. Amen. Shabbat shalom to you. Sabbath peace to you all. We're going to let's bow our head in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace and your goodness that you bless us with all week long. We thank you for providing, making ways when some of us couldn't see our way through. We thank you for health and we thank you for strength. We thank you for the activities of our limbs, Father. Most of all, we thank you for our mind. We thank you for a mind that constantly stays on you, Father. Our, our everyday thought is about you, Father. We just say we thank you for being in our right mind. And Father, we yield our vessels. And we welcome you into our temples to revive us, to heal us, to set us free and to strengthen us. For all week long, Father, we've been battling the enemy and, and the darkness of this world. Oh, it's so refreshing to be in this place of fellowship, this gathering with my brothers and sisters who are like-minded believers of the faith. Father, I thank you that we realize that we're not in this thing alone. Father, I'm encouraged. I'm encouraged, Father. I'm so happy to see our brothers and our sisters. Father, we say we thank you for them. Now, Father, don't allow them to leave this place the same way they came. I know they came rejoicing and with great expectation. But, Father, just give them another touch of your love, another touch of your grace, another touch of your spirit. To let them know that, yes, I'm right there by your side. So, Father, have your way. Have your way. Anything that's not like you, Father, we ask you to send it up out of here. Whatever spirit that's not right in this place, Father, we ask you, Father, to clean it up. And, Father, in our lives, if there's something that we have done that maybe we are not aware of, something we might have said, Father, forgive us of any sins that we might have committed. Father, and forgive us for any ministry opportunity that we missed because we were so busy being busy and not following your voice to stop and minister to that brother or that sister that was in the street. Father, forgive us and teach us how to minister as we go, not just where we go. Father, send your word. Send your word, Father, to bless your people. To bless your people. To heal your people. To sanctify your people. 
your word, you said in your word that the word will clean us up. It will sanctify us. We'll make you whole if we were just to take heed, listen, and obey. So, Father, we just want to say thank you. We just want to say thank you. And with uplifting hands, we praise you. We exalt you. We adore you. We thank you for being our Father. We thank you, greater Elohim, for being our Creator. We thank you, Yahweh, for sending your Son to redeem us from this lost world. We thank you for Yeshua, Hamashiach, the anointed one. And there is no other name that is given above the heavens or in this earth that men may be saved. We love you. Father, as the people are, as they prepare those who are on their way, give them traveling mercies. And to those who are listening to this broadcast uh, via on the internet, through social networks, we pray, Father, that you bless them wherever they may be. That when they hear this word, that they won't harden their heart, but they will yield to the truth. And that they will realize that they've been empowered by the spirit of darkness, a false doctrine. That they may just listen and receive the word. Because if they do, Father, they will be, they will be liberated. Father, we pray for the sick and shut in. We pray for those who have lost loved ones on this week. We ask that your comforting spirit embrace them and fill them. And Father, and lastly, we just want to say we are honored and privileged to be counted among the fold because of your grace. We say thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 You may be, I will remain standing for the reading of the commandment. And Elohim spake all these words and saying, I am Yahweh, thy Elohim, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other Elohim before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself them nor serve them. For I, Yahweh, thy Elohim, am a jealous El visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and the fourth generation of them that hate me and showing mercy unto thousands of them who love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of Yahweh thy Elohim in vain, for Yahweh will not hold him guiltless and taketh, that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath day of Yahweh thy Elohim. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days Yahweh made heaven and earth, the sea and all in them. It is a rest of the seventh day. Wherefore Yahweh blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land which Yahweh thy Elohim giveth thee. Thou shalt not murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his donkey, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Hallelujah. Now, this time is where we walk around and we get to greet each other because in heaven, we may not know everybody, but we're all going to be brothers and sisters and we're going to welcome each other with open arms. So just walk around and grab each other and just give love.
before we go into our song service, I just want to take this moment, you know, because I ain't in no hurry, you know, now if you have somewhere to be, this is the way I am, especially when it comes to this special day. I tell people, well, if you're so busy, you have a busy schedule, you just go ahead and do what you have to do. I'm all right with that, you know, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to shortchange Yahweh because he blessed me so, so I allow him to have his way and I allow people uh, to express himself as well because one thing I say you know what I just don't want to be the type of uh, a church or ministry that you know I get up and help your sister please that 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 that, that, that gets up and do all of this talking see I need to know what Yahweh is doing in his people's life so uh, every now and then I like to hear from his people hey what's going on with you do you have a testimony something that other can be empowered from and because of the word tell us that we are overcome that we overcome by one another what testimonies so at this time i'm going to just allow space for, for if anyone wants to share a testimony or just or just to give thanks you know you know we're going to do this and then we're going to go into this is not going to take long but i'm telling you that uh, we all should have something to say and uh, and so we're going to do this and then we're going to go into our song service for a few minutes and then we're going to go into the word of yahweh is that okay all right my name is brother robinson how y'all doing today all right, it, it, it's such a blessing to really be in the house of the Elohim. Yeah, yeah. Not on Sunday, but his Sabbath day. It's, it's so special and it's such a blessing to be here and be in this truth and be woke. I'm so happy. Um, for many of years, I've, I've grown up in the, in the Christian church and uh, celebrated on the wrong day. Hallelujah. All right. You're not alone, Hallelujah. my brother. And it's, it's such a blessing to really be in this truth because this is when you really get his spirit. Yeah. This is when he really comes and makes you a new creature. Not what the, what the Christian church says that, oh, oh, you'll be a new creature, just believe in him. No, actually walking in his law, statutes, and commandments. That's it, that's it. This is how you, how you become a new person right here. I just want to say I, 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 I love, I love y'all. I love Yeshua and Yeshua. And I'm thankful for being here, and I'm thankful that we have somebody to come fellowship with. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody else? Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. This week, something amazing happened at my job. For over, what? 20 years I worked in the District of Columbia, the public school system, and then I got access. And that was in an interesting situation, but God brought one of my very good friends to me and said, I know of a place where your skills and your talents can be used. This happens to be a place called PSI. And when you service a population of people who really need to know the love of Elohim and the fact that Yeshua died for them. But what happened this week was one of my fellow Christian sisters came into my office and she said, God woke me up this morning and told me to come to your office. Just like that. And she said, so I'm, I'm just going to sit here. So she sat down in my office. And I'm looking at her thinking, well, what could God have meant for you to come for? What's going on? He didn't tell me anything, you know? So she sits there. People come, people go, and she sits there. Finally, she says to me, can we pray? And I said, well, right now I have a meeting, but I'll come down to your office. So I finished my meeting and went down to her office. When I got to her office, God put a, one of the other saints on my mind, and I said, let's call this other saint. And so I called her, and she said, sure, I'll come down and pray with you all. So now there are three of us. God hasn't told us why we're coming together. He just told us to come together. And we finally figure out we need to pray. So in my prayer, I prayed for my family, my church family, and for my, my children and my journey with God. 
in her prayer, she prayed for my family, her family, and the other sister's family. And then when the final lady prayed, she prayed for all of our families. We still didn't know why we were together other than we needed to come because we've been instructed to come together and pray. When I got home that evening, one of my sisters called me and she said, my son had a heart attack. He's on the side of the road. They've called the ambulance. He's going to the hospital and I don't know what to do. God had told her to come and what? Pray. We had prayed. The very next day, my grandson woke up with piercing pain in his ears. And my daughter, who had been instructed by God to stay home and take care of him, was in place. Went with him to the hospital for the ear infection got a good report and he's much better at home the third lady who God had instructed daughter came home and said mom I'm overwhelmed by my job and laid down on her bed and started to sob I was amazed at how a simple command meant so much to three different ladies each one of us had a crisis that we didn't know about that was going to come. And before the crisis could hit us, Elohim put it in our hearts to just sit down and pray. And when we prayed, he told us what to pray for. We didn't know the circumstance. We just prayed. When we got through with that prayer, and this is the last part of my testimony. When we got through with that prayer, I remember saying to my sister Sarah, I said, you know, when I was in DC public school working as a counselor for all those years, there were many saints and there were many Christians, but we never were given commands to come together and pray. I've been here now at this place for a little over seven years and God has given me two sisters that obey his voice. Two sisters who are, par are powerful prayer warriors. Two sisters that can teach me how to better listen to God. Two sisters who get answers through to Halloween. I just want you all to know that this ministry and this journey for me, because like you, I was raised in a Seventh-day Adventist environment. I knew God and Jesus. I knew Lord in Christ. I did not know Elohim, Yah, Yahweh, or Yeshua. And it was because God needed me to be in this place at this time that he allowed things to happen in my life that would bring me here today at this time. So. Brothers and sisters, as we go through this journey of life, we do not understand when God gives us a simple command, but when he gives us a simple command, we need to make sure that we're just in the place, ready to do whatever he needs us to do. And if it's just say a simple prayer, we don't know who, or when or where that prayer will be manifested but we do know this we do know that with that prayer comes an anointing and a covering that may change other people's lives including our own
Out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you None like you Are you is greater? Are you is greater? Are you is stronger? Lord, you are higher than any other. Our Yah is healer, awesome in power. Our Yah, our Yah. Our Yah is greater, our Yah is stronger. Lord, you are higher than any other. Our Yah is healer, awesome. anything in particular in terms of a specific testimony but kind of like what my brother said here it's just important that when two or three are gathered to understand that Yahweh is in the midst and there's no greater way to make the enemy mad than to simply just say thank you and so I'm here today I press my way 
to church simply because I needed to be in the temple to look Satan dead in his face and let him know that he is a liar, that he will not have my family, he will not have my job, he will not have my finances, and no matter what he throws at me, that my Yahweh is greater, my Yahweh is stronger, that Elohim is the creator of heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is. And on this day, he blessed today, he hallowed today, and because this is his holy day, I'm going to stand in his presence and offer up thanksgiving because I am grateful for his love. I am grateful for salvation. I am grateful for his son, Yeshua, the Messiah, the Savior, the one who died for you and I. So today, devil, I came to serve notice to you and your minions that you will not have the victory in my life and that my God is Yahweh. My God is Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Rapha, and I am his child. And if anybody needs anything, I encourage you today to lift up your voice and to just say thank you. To raise your hands and say thank you in the midst of your battles, in the midst of your storm to begin to worship because where Israel went wrong was that they began to complain but the new Israel will not complain in the wilderness the new Israel has learned from the old the new Israel will stand and we will say thank you for the manna thank you for deliverance thank you for bringing us out of bondage thank you for the land of milk and honey thank you for what is to come oh God and we give you glory and we give you praise The word tells us to learn from the saints of old. The word tells us to do it differently than, than they did. So this time around, as his chosen people, we have a responsibility to praise in the midst of our circumstances because we have to learn. We have to learn from the mistakes of our fathers. And that that curse is being lifted. That curse is being lifted. That curse is being lifted. We are coming into a new age. Yahweh is raising up a new army and it is our job, our responsibility to praise in spite of what is happening, to praise in spite of being in Egypt. This is just a new Egypt, but this is a brand new Israel. And Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. Shabbat Shalom, family. My name is Kerwin Elijah. And I want to thank the Father for reawakening me. Because I knew who the Father was. And I knew who I was three years ago. But I tried to do things. I left the Father. I tried to do things on my own because of this world and of this flesh. Forgetting who I was. Forgetting that he provide for me but I want to thank the father for presenting himself to me and to my spiritual brothers in a way that we can only understand and magnify his name so that we can give him the glory for reawakening us and awakening us and I also want to thank the father for letting me allow his spirit to be on me and to guide me to our spiritual home for my spiritual family and my family so I want to say, thank you, Father Yah. Amen. In Yeshua's name, we say hallelujah. 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 My testimony. Mm -hmm. My name Tim. I'm a Hezekiah. I switch my name because I don't want none of that. Grew up in church. My father was a pastor. Uh, I know this hard for him, you know. By his son, his son learned the truth though. So it's hard for him, so I'm fighting a lot, a lot. I just holler at parents, I'm fighting a lot. With my family trying to come into this truth. But I want to say all praise to the Abba. Kahala, ya, kahala. All praise to the Father for waking me up. Nobody could, nobody could take this, my, my sins away. Nobody could take the feeling of uh, uh, sinning away but the Father. I ain't want to do it no more. No, no, church ain't do that for me. Church ain't do that for me. The, the, the feeling of, no, nah, you can't do that. You know who you are. You, you, you know.
know what I did for you and your family. You can't do that. I didn't want to say thank you, Father, so, so much, man, for waking me up in this truth. And he said, if my people are called by my name, I want to say thank the Father for making me a fisher of men. Like he told Peter, fisher of men. Now I could, now I could talk to a brother and let him know who he is. Bring him about the street. Bring, talk to him about it. Because I know what he's been through. I know what he's going through. I'm going to say to God for my brother standing right here. Right here. When I was on, he know. You know, bro. Because when I, I was on fire, I was lighting up the house. But I was going out of anger. I was lighting the house up. Out of anger. But the father had to separate him and wake him up on his own. Sometimes we got to separate. Like he just said, plant the seed. Plant the seed. And let the father do the rest. I say to die, I say to die, y'all, to die, y'all. For your truth, for everything you're doing, keep using your people, Father. Keep waking your people up, Father. We're going to really put the devil on our feet, Father. Hallelujah. God, hallelujah. God, hallelujah. God, hallelujah. You know, there's a song. You know, I love the ministry of music. You know, the word is wonderful, but there's sometimes, there were some songs that, that can reach you like the word can't because it reaches a spot. And, you know, first of all, music is a universal language that is understood and felt all over the world. And I want to encourage my brother because there is a desire that he has in his heart, especially for his family, that Yahweh will save his family. So we're going to touch and agree in this song that 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 his desires be met come on my fellow the song and say y'all is able to do he is able to do Just what he said he will do. He's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on ya, cause he won't give up on you. He's able. Put those hands together, you know Yah's able.
Somebody that's sitting next to you. Say, it's so good to be here today. Tell somebody, I'll say, I'm glad I came. I'm glad I, 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 yeah, I, I'm glad I came. I'm glad I came. We're not going to be before you long. For those who know me, I normally try to keep my sermons between. 20 to 30 minutes max because we could only retain but so much information. <laughs> so I don't want to bore anybody, put them in the future, they will look, look, will you hurry up? We want you to be able to receive what y'all have for this house. But before I dive into today's lesson, I want to recall a prophetic word that the Almighty gave to this house just on four weeks ago. I want to remind you so you can stay focused on that word that was given to this ministry. Elohim spoke a word in my spirit and said that because of our obedience and our faithfulness during these past two years of warfare, that we are about to enter into a season of rest. Tell a neighbor a season of rest. For 10 years, oh my. And during this season, he's going to allow this ministry to build and to prosper. Also, the Holy Spirit says that there will be an influx of unchurch and a rebirth for those who have walked away from various faith for whatever reason to become faithful disciples. It's not by haphazard that you are here. And it's not by haphazard that you are here. Because what he's doing, he's planting people in this house that's going to be a light so that when the influx come, they will have a greater cloud of witness. Prophecy also said that that, that this ministry will be filled with entrepreneurship, that many of us here will have our own businesses. I spoke to you a year ago and gave you the plan, the five-year uh, uh, plan of this ministry, and included in that plan was for we to become, many of us to become entrepreneurs, that the ministry will be self-supporting and that the people will prosper, not depending on our government or any handout, but the Lord, that our Yahweh is going to bless us that we we may be able to replenish our wealth and live in the overflow. And I, I and I begin to act on that word last year on that vision 
And my family members will tell you, you know, uh, there was an opportunity to, to get a barber equipment. There was this gentleman who had been in the barber business for many years, and he decided to retire. He had all this wonderful, beautiful equipment. And, and Pastor Al, all I saw was the vision. I don't know nothing about Barbara Saloon or anything, but my family would tell you, and I didn't have the money to secure it, secure it but Yahweh made a way that I bought his whole shop. Land sitting right there in, 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 in the service unit is a whole barber shop and a beauty shop, equipment, hair dryers, booths, sinks, the whole nine yards. And I, I don't have to act around, hey, any of y'all know how to cut hair? <laughs> because I believe in the vision. Well, I'm asking the question, your brothers know how to cut hair? <laughs> But see, see, there's a reason why you're here. Okay, so it got to look like you're going to be running this barbershop, my brother. <laughs> yes, indeed. I'm trusting. I, I, I told, I said, look, our plan this year is to secure our own building because in this building I want to house various businesses. From dead care to a barbershop to you name it, we're going to have it. But that's the vision of this ministry. And this is what the Holy Spirit spoke uh, in, in the prophetic words. That there was going to be a, a entrepreneurship among the many of people. This is going to be a blessed congregation. Tell somebody a blessed congregation. Another thing that I want to be very clear because one thing that I've always do, my, my daughter said to me, she said, she said, Dad, seems like every time the people come, you find some kind of way to run them away. And I tell her, I say, baby, no, I'm not trying to run any, anybody away, but I'm not trying to get nobody no false nothing. It's important and imperative that I stand true on Yahweh's word and that I be true not to deceive the people. See, I'm not worried about the numbers, but I'm worried about growing up people in the faith that they can walk in obedience. And so that's my assignment. So I have to make sure that the vision of this ministry is clear because I don't need anybody to be so well surprised. Well, I thought you were such and such and such and such a thing, and you know, then they leave it. No, you're going to know up front how this ministry operates and who we serve. You have to know who you are. You don't know who you are, you can't be effective. You'd be just as confused as anybody else. You ever seen a crazy dog sitting up there chasing his tail? You'd be like that. But I want to be very clear that we observe the Holy Sabbath and commandments of Yahweh. We're still in the process of learning because we have been indoctrinated with other, other types of doctrines. But, but Yahweh is teaching us. That's why we are open, but we only open to truth. We observe the Sabbath and its commandments while recognizing and acknowledging the authentic name of the Almighty Heavenly Father, not no translated name. The names of the Almighty Heavenly Father and His Son, Yeshua. Let it be known also that the cultural context of this ministry is one that reflects the kingdom of heaven, which is a holy and righteous nation filled with people of all nationalities. For in Elohim, there is no male, female, no Jews, no Greek, no black and white. He sees us all the same as born again believers. For well, the scriptures declare that Elohim so loved the world. Tell somebody he loved the world. He didn't love a culture. He didn't love a, a particular race. But the Bible said he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and that whosoever shall believe it. Said 
if you fall under that category of the whosoever, then you're in the safe place. That includes you. But I want you to understand that it's not about a, a black scene. Yes, we know who we are and that we're chosen folks, but it's not about us. Can I say that again? It's not about us. It's about those who love him and obey his word. And I don't care what color they are. And we are to embrace them. So when I look at the context of this congregation, what's going to be? I'm going to see all kinds of stuff. I'm going to see the urban context, kids that's lost in the street. They come just the way they are until Yahweh put them in a place where they need to be. You're going to see some people in their in, in the African context, in the way their culture, we're going to see their way. See, we come from different backgrounds, but in this thing, we're going to speak the same language because we are of the same faith, serving the Almighty Yahweh. Salvation. Is not religion. Tell your neighbor, salvation is not religion. Salvation is redemption through the Son Yeshua. That's what life is all about. It's about redemption, living to live again. And if you believe on the name, if you believe that he died and rose again, you in, in good shape. I don't care what color. I don't care where you came from. You're a child of Almighty King. So, although I am very knowledgeable of the history of our black race, what's been hidden from us, what's been stolen from us, but I have to stay focused on what the purpose of the kingdom is. And it's about being available to everybody who believe in this word. So my expectation is to see a house full of all kinds of ethnic groups. We can learn their culture at school. Yeah, we can learn their culture, understand. You know, we have to, it's important that we understand one another culture, that we know, we, see, because I can't minister to you if I don't know your culture. If I don't know that you came off the streets out of Southeast Berry Farms, then I don't know how you think. But if I understand your culture, where you came from, then I can communicate with you. I can empower you because I understand and have knowledge of what you're dealing with in your faith. Is that all right? Tell your neighbor, say, I don't need religion. I need redemption. How many living to live again? Huh? That's what this is all about. All right, I, I, I took too long on that. I took, so I'm going to have to truncate my message. Today I'm going to talk about it's time to level the playing field. Let me say that again. It's time to level the playing field. Father, I yield my vessel for your glory. Speak to your servant. Have your own way. You show in me my prayer. The seasons of blessing is upon us. For Yahweh's people who are of the proletariats, the proletariats and other social classes, and I'm going to explain that later. Here in the America system that was strategically designed to keep people in bondage and in check, in basic linguistic term, the world's monitoring system. In the cycle of life, there's a reoccurring theme that happens with each generation in every era since socialization began. 
Socialization is a continuing process whereby an individual acquires a personal identity and learns the norms, values, behavior, and social skills appropriate to his or social position. Tell the neighbor, tell the neighbor, say indoctrinated, brainwashed. The superstructure of society is composed of social institutions, political structures, and culture that is classified by its demographics. In this system, in this system, infrastructure, revitalization, and gentrification reoccurs every 25 to 40 years. And where are you going with this, preacher? Because I'm going to show you what you've been fighting against all your life. Why you've been struggling. Why our people been struggling. Even both black, white. Because based on the classes of the world, the social, the socioeconomic classes of the world, you have the rich. Used to be a time we had middle class, but we don't have no middle class. So what's happening in our society now is rich is getting richer and the poor is getting poorer. When you understand how this system works, then you'll know how to combat it. And you will also realize at the end that there's no way that you can go through this journey without Yahweh being on your side. Now, without going to the logistics of capitalism, which is the government master template that controls the motion, direction, and tempo of the economics of the world, capitalism is designed, like I said, to make the rich richer and the poor poorer. Now, if I may paraphrase using the campaign slogan of our current president, making America great again. You'll get that later. For thousands of years, this system has crippled society in every culture, in every country, in every state, and in every city. That's the reason why we have impoverished communities all around the world, because of this system. I know some of you may not be familiar with this system by name, but after today, you're going to know exactly how the system works. The conflict theory is the trappings of this controlling system that is strategically, strategically designed to create division between the rich and the poor. And as we are keenly aware, that division produces revolt. Revolt causes a society to break away or, or from to break away from or rise against withdrawing from allegiance or subjection to those in authority. Pastor Allen, you and I talk about this sometimes. That's why we have all kinds of churches and denomination because of the conflict theory. You're gonna find out that this conflict theory was established. On purpose. One of the things I say, Father, whenever I minister, I want to make sure that I empower the people. I want to give, give them more than, hey, Yahweh is good. Won't he bless you? But I try to give them information that's going to help them survive in this life so we can live in the promise. And the promise is that Yahweh said about his son, said, I've come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. But because we are in prison by all of this crap that's around us, a lot of us are not living the abundance. Abundant life. I tell people all the time, I want to live, I want to have both life. I want the abundant life and the eternal life. The scripture says we perish because of the lack of knowledge. Many are traveling through this life with blurred vision 
and distorted vision, blurred and distorted, can't see nothing, not having a clue how the cycle of life works in a man-controlled world. Many don't even have a clue, an inkling of a clue of what they are up against, all because they lack the knowledge. If they really knew, Sister Jackie, daily they will lift their voice and sing the song, I need thee, oh, I need thee every hour, I need thee. So, I want you to just take a quick second and encourage, encourage the person that's sitting next to you and tell them it's time to level the playing field. Tell them. Well, come on, I can't, I can't hear you. I know this. I say it like you mean it. Tell that, tell that person sitting next to you, it's time to level the playing field. Say it like you mean it. Now, by the shoring, I'm almost finished. By the shoring of hands, are you familiar with the Karl Marx conflict theory? Anybody? The Karl Marx, he was a German citizen, a philosopher, con the, the conflict theory. When you get a chance, I want you to study the Karl Marx called K-A-R-L, Marx, M-A-R-X. I need you to study, to read. It will enlighten you. It will be a blessing to you. The conflict theory. And you'll understand why that in our communities we can't come about a consensus or anything. We're always in conflict. But there's a reason why this was established. This was established, the conflict theory. It's something that our president is using right now. The conflict theory is designed to, di to distract. The call of Marx the theory, all to you who listen to me out there on, on social network, I need you to do this assignment because it's going to change your life. It's going to change your walk. The Karl Marx conflict theory. Karl Marx was born in 1800, in 18, 18, 18, 19, something like that. 1818, right? He was a German philosopher, economist, historian, sociologist, political theorist, journalist, and socialist revolutionary. I encourage you to, to read it because it's on his writings. And on his findings, on his theory, that Adolf Hitler came into power because it was the strategy that Adolf, Adolf used to conquer the world. But it's the same system, but now it's taking another, another higher that our current president here in America is using the same conflict theory, but he has taken it to another level, even higher than Hitler to the point that even our own government can't even deal with him. I mean, tell me who can lie like a person lie. He lied like that and you catch him in a blatant lie, but he still gets away with it. Look at what happened this week with the Mueller's report. Now, I had my, my thing about the Mueller's report when Mueller started because I, the, it, you know, because I'm telling you, the spirit, when you walk in, 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 the, in the spirit, it will not leave you dumbfounded. When they said Mueller was coming, everybody was getting happy. Oh, he going to get them. But I say Mueller's part of the clique. Yeah, yeah, I said it. How can you do a, get a report like that made up almost 400 pages and condense it down to three pages and come up with the, the, with the result of innocent? When you have all of these indictments, how the world tells somebody the conflict theory? It's at work. Well, we don't know about it. Why? Because they don't teach us stuff like this in school. I'm almost finished. 
The conflict theory system is designed to blind you spiritually by teaching and allowing false religion to, to, to keep people divided because they don't want you to have unity in the faith. That is why the number one attraction to become an American citizen is the freedom of speech and the freedom of and liberty of religion. When America was being established, they said, Chris, first they tried to tell a lie, they said Christopher Columbus discovered, but how can you discover something when the Indians was already here? But anyway, when European when the Spaniards came over here to America, they brought along with them their traditions and their customs. When they brought us over here on the slave ships and the slave ships took away our language and took away our culture, took away our beliefs and only permitted us to learn their language and their customs. Tell somebody they blind you spiritually. And that's why we have so much confusion in our land that people don't know who the true living almighty Yahweh is. Because the trick of the enemy was to make his holy name obsolete. To, 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 to erase it from the face of the earth. Those are crying shame that over 10 billion people across this world, they don't recognize the true name of the son of the living almighty Yahweh. It was done intentionally. Tell a neighbor it was done intentionally. They blind you intellectually because the, of the unfair system that's, that's, in, that's in motion, the unjust educational system that deprives many of knowledge, but not only knowledge, but true information. In our schools, we learn all sorts of lies, false truth. And I want to say this to those who have letters. Now, I'm not against education because I love education. I, I love education. But I, I want to, uh, to shine a light on something and bring about an awareness that maybe you're not uh, aware of. Now, I, to those who have the letters behind your names, uh, the DDs, the PACs, uh, and all the MDs and all that kind of stuff, I I applaud you for braving the elements of distraction and the many challenges to achieve your academic goal. Yes, I do. I applaud that. I ce celebrate your tenacity and true grit for your academic prowess for reaching a pinnacle in life that eludes many. I applaud you. But please don't think because you achieve those things that you're safe from the system. Because in actuality, now don't don't get in, in don't get into your feelings. Don't get into your feelings. But hear me as I illuminate for your understanding in this system. Now, now this, this, this may offend some of y'all, but in this system, you're just a dress up second class intelligent speaking citizen that's caught up in the same system as the poor. The only difference is you being of the class or the class who survived deprivation and made it out of the lowest class allow you to enjoy the fruit of your labor for a little while. Tell somebody for a little while. And at a heartbeat, this same system stripped you of your little wealth at a point of time when you are most vulnerable as a senior citizen who has retired and is now dealing with the aging process. Your, your health is declining and the high cost of medicine is wiping away most of your savings and secure bonds and 401ks to the point now you have to take out second and third mortgage on your home only to lose because you can't pay it back because you can't repay the loan. I'm talking about the system. You can't pay taxes on your home because you barely can survive 
up and they steal your home at, at I mean, for, for, for pennies. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They steal your home for pennies. I'm talking about this corrupt saints, uh, uh, this system. And you no longer own a property that's been in your possession for over 40 years. You are now left. Your family is now left without property, without equity. This demonic system is designed to steal, kill, and destroy. It hasn't changed its color. Not notice left it never changed its color. From the inception of America, the Indians was here, and the Indians blessed them, opened their arms, and what did they do to the Indians? They 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 made them drunk, bought a lot of wine, made them drunk. Kill a lot of them and then took them, put, push them off of their own land. Put them on some reservation somewhere in the mountains. Enemy come to steal, kill, and destroy. When you look all through your life, that's the way the system is. I was going to go through something else I want you to do on your own. Do everybody know what social class they in? in terms of their income, their profession, their jobs. Do you know the blue collar workers, the white collars? When you get when you get time, take the time this week and research and you're gonna be surprised. This system is something else. And the whole system is designed to control, like I said, the economics of the world while uh, keeping the poor people. The reason they want to keep the poor people poor is because they know, especially the black race, we are God. We are Yahweh's chosen people. We are his chosen people. I told you I'm going to truncate some of this. They blind. The system blind us historically. Like I said, not giving us truthful accounts of events that happened in our history. Their agenda is to ex exalt the inferior race. Above the true superior race. Let me say that again. Their agenda is to exalt the inferior race, whom they call us the black people, but they really know that they are the inferior race. So their thing is they trying to exalt themselves over the true superior race. That's why we struggle. It's the system. Tell your neighbor, it's the system. I'm almost done. I promise you, I'm almost done. Five minutes, I'm done. But I'm trying to help you understand, once you know this system, this system, I, you have something to fight with. It blinds you domestically. Once again, the effects of the conflict theory. As we watch Hollywood and television talk shows, how it influenced relationships, placing marriages in jeopardy. Y'all sit up there and listen to Oprah and all those folks. And Oprah not even married. And her and Steve Harvey, who, uh, and you listen to them, and then you're going to sit up there and pattern your life after the information that they give you. Have you lost your mind? They, 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 they influence the relationships to the point where they are now placing male and female genders. Notice I'm not acknowledging any other. Male and female genders against the other to the point no one no longer understands the order and the role of a man, the role of a woman, the role of a husband, or the role of a wife as ordained by Yahweh. Everything is about, it's about me. The woman is upset and everything because everything, is, she wants things to be by her and the man wants the woman to respect him as a man. But the woman can't, busy, can't respect the man being a man because she's so busy exalting herself over the man. Not understanding this system. I had one sister, I had one sister say, well, I don't date black men. Because they don't know how to treat a woman. 
I said, you mean to tell me you rather marry a man who raped the, your mothers and your grandmothers and 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 you, and kill your men and and you you rather marry these people, the people who just steal, kill, and destroy their they're liars, they're murderers, and she, she and, but 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 you think a white man is better than a black? I ain't making this thing uh, a black and white thing, but I'm just bringing truth to the fore so we can see what is. You mean to tell me that after a, a, a man sit up there, he was in the field and the master reached out, called for his wife, took the wife into the big house, made love to her, and in some case impregnated her. And when he got finished with her, he sent her out back into the fields. And that same black man that you don't have no respect for you, he never looked down on you in disgrace, but he embraced you and said it's going to be okay after a while. But yet in your season, all of a sudden the black man is no good to you. They sorry, and a white man, I think I just read it. But this is the machine working again. This is the machine, the conflict theory, to the point that we are so confused that now we have so much confusion in our homes. And I tell, I said, look, well, what about the family? Okay, yeah, I know you want it to be about you and you want it to be about, but you got a family. What about the family? That people don't have a problem divorcing these days. They don't have a problem walking away. But what about the family? What about the children? What about Yahweh's audiences, audiences for marriage? We've gotten to a place where now people don't even get married. I'm talking about still the conflict theory, people. I'm still, still there. But I'm giving it a bring it in. Because of these unfortunate circumstances, many are functioning with blurred impair and impaired vision, and they can't see where they're going. Many are on this road called life, traveling blind. But I come today with good news. It's time to level the playing field. As we can see, the odds are now in your favor. For well, greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. And brothers and sisters, but well, first you have to open your eyes. It's time to open your eyes. See what's before you. And I'm going to give you a little incentive to open your eyes from this particular pericope coming out of 2 Kings chapter number 6, verse 17. Now, you're going to be for the sake of time. You read the whole story starting from verse 1. But I'm going to just start from, I guess I'll start saying, when is he going to give us scripture? <laughs> 2 Kings. Okay, you may begin reading. Then the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. And the man of Yah sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of Yah told him and warned him of, and saved himself there, not once nor twice. Therefore, the heart of the king of Syria was so troubled for this thing. And he called his servants and said unto them, Will ye not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? And one of his servants said, None, my Elohim, O king, but Elisha. The prophet that is in Israel telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. And he said, Go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, 
he is in Dothan. Therefore said he to the horses and chariots and great and a great host, and they became by night and compassed the city about. And when the servant of the man of Yah was risen early and gone forth, behold, a host compassed the city both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with him. And hey, Elisha read, read that again, verse 16. I want you to listen to this. Verse 16. And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with him. With them, I'm sorry. I'm read that again. And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Elohim, I pray, pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And Elohim opened his eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. You can stop right there. Now, there is so much in this, this particular text that we can get out, a lot of points and principles that we can get out of this particular uh, storyline, uh, this narrative here, but I am not after those things. I want you to see one thing. Now, the thing that in verse 16, the, <laughs> the man of Elohim, Elijah, y'all know who Elijah, the prophet Elijah, who was, who was a benefactor of a double portion uh, blessing from one of the greatest prophets, Elijah. And so Elijah said, look, uh, there's greater among us. In other words, with us. It was just him and his servant that was with us. But yet, dude, when you look at the situation, this, this the king that sent all of his soldiers and his troops to the point that they surrounded the whole city going after one man. But the servant who walked with, with the prophet you know, he was trembling and he was afraid because when he looked outside the doors and he saw this great army, Elijah said, don't worry about him. It's more with us than with him. I guess that servant said, what? Just me and you. But then the man of Elohim began to pray and say, Father, open his eyes. And this is my prayer to the people, to you out in the social network, to those who sit in this congregation. My prayer to my father and father, open their eyes that they may see. And now with your eyes is open, you will see that greater is with us than the system of this world. Tell your neighbor, say, greater is with us than this system of this world. Oh, we ready to go home. We ready to go home. Are you being blessed so far? In Romans chapter number 8, verse 31, it reads, if Elohim be for us, he is more than the world against me. When we look through the lens of today's lesson that depicts a view of total, the total picture of life with its challenges, just to survive it alone. The ratio numbers against you will be as if I was fighting Iron Mike Tyson. And if anybody were to ask you, well, Sutton is fighting Iron Mike Tyson, what are the odds? <laughs> Without controversy, it will be something like zero to zillion. That boy won't have a chance. 
But when we look, look at the scope of this system that has been implemented in this world, we find out that in reality, when we look at our odds, there's no way that we're supposed to survive this system, especially we, the people of a black race. So now we don't only need the Father for salvation. We need him to get us through this mess that we call life. We need his covering. We need his protection. But with Yahweh, Elohim on our side, we can survive. We will survive. All we have to do is level the playing field. Well, how do you do that, son? Well, I'm glad you asked. How do you do that? First, you have to open your eyes. You have to hear what's being said. You have to look at the truth. Forget about the way you've been raised. Forget about what you've been taught. Look in this word. It will give you truth. So all you have to do is open your eyes to the truth and surrender to this truth. And I let our wonderful Elohim give you life of abundance as well the eternal life. See, because everything belongs to our creator. Everything belongs. He's the creator. Elohim was the creator. Not only that, he has all power in his hands. So I don't, I don't care. You remember the story when, when this one prophet was told to curse Yahweh's people, but every time he opened his mouth to curse him, he wound up blessing them? Because the power of our father, he's a heart fixer. He's a mind regulator. You may want, your intentions may, do, may be to do harm to me. But when the holy father intervenes, that what you set out to do, he reverses and make it a blessing for me. So no matter what this system is saying, don't you know we have the favor of Elohim? What? You may not have the credentials and everything that you need to require for certain position, but don't you know because of favor and because he has the power to do what he wants, when he wants, how he wants, for who he wants, that position that you so desire, that man say you're not qualified. And that even if you are qualified because of his race, Himself, don't want to see black people to, to, to raise above a certain level and they hide it from you knowing that you qualify that you deserve that position and they try to keep it from you oh but Elohim so that's why I say this system that we're fighting against you can't win against it on your own could I say that again? So we need him every day, every hour, every minute. My brother said earlier, he said there was a time when he walked away. But he realized that he needs the Father. And there's no better or safer place to be. So I'm saying, you may stand to your feet. Rest to your feet. This world system, don't allow it to put fear in you. See what you see in the spirit. And walk therein and become that which you see. You have the favor. He will be with you. He will open doors for you. And that's how we beat this system. Let me give you a prophetic word that the Father gave me on this week. For those who know me, I, 
I, I, I love to pray and I love to fast because it keeps me close to him and connected and I can hear from him. He told me to tell this congregation to prepare. This is a time not for you to spend but put aside monies because this time next year there's going to be so many opportunities and things available to us the black people who have been oppressed for so long The father told me, said that it won't be long that this nation is going to experience another crash, a stock market crash. But this is going to be unique. This is going to be different. During this season, the oppressor is going to try to give up everything that he has or she has just to survive. A lot of the homes that they have, automobiles, it's going to become available to us because they have to unload it because of what's going to happen. And you can mark this. I say one year from now, this is a position where the Spirit told me to tell y'all to save. I've already started. I mean, you no, know, most of us have savings, but no, some serious saving because some of us are going to acquire mansions the way they stole mansions, you know, after us paying, uh, our folks paying for 60 years for their property only to lose it because they couldn't afford their taxes. So the white man steal the homes and pay only a tax value. And in some cases, uh, I've known the people bought beautiful homes for less than $1,000. Those who want luxury cars, beautiful homes, you're going to be able to purchase them this time next year for hardly nothing. Hear ye the word of the Father. Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for this fellowship. And Father, I pray that, that the people that heard of this message, Father, that they would take heed and understand that this system, you know, that they can't win in this system. I don't care how much they fight and fight and, and, and try to improve themselves and, and to go along with the system to prepare themselves, that even after obtaining the most highest education that they can, they still going to experience the demonic force of this system. And so, Father, we pray that they would just surrender to your will and to your way and just understand that having you on their side, that they can beat any system that man creates, Father. So, bless your people, Father. We ask you to bless them, enlarge their territory, Father, and bless their, bless their finance, bless their homes, Father, the, those that are living uh, uh, in apartments and can't afford a home. And we know how the system is because the way they have it set up is that they even know by the grade, uh, uh, your, your grade class, whether you're a homeowner or not, because they know that you can't, that, that you can't afford it. So, Father, we ask in those who are of lower class, Father, open doors for their Father that they can live in the overflow, that they can live in the abundance, that our children can have great education, and that we can have a safe community to live in, Father, so we can raise our children not in fear but in the admonition of your mighty word that they too can receive the, the prize of abundant and eternal life. This we pray, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.